This is Highly Social with Mike Eaton. Bitches, show Mike Eaton your titties. Hi, welcome to Highly Social. I'm your host, Mike Eaton. Please like and subscribe on the Creek of the Cave Studios channel here. That's the stuff I got to say at the beginning so that the podcast keeps happening. We're brought to you by the Creek of the Cave Studio, Creek of the Cave, best comedy club, the whole goddamn world right here on 7th Street. Come down. We got mics and shows seven days a week. And with that out of the way, we're joined by a very special guest. It's Casey Rocket. Hey, happy to be back here. Hey, Creek and Cave. Hey, yeah. Mike. <laughs> Dude, it's been a minute. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's uh, so wild to think of the podcasting started with like, hey, come and do this crazy worm report at the <laughs> Drinking Bros studio. So, uh, hey, man, you're touring constantly. Do you have five minutes for a pod? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we used to worm report. Me and Mike, old friends. Worm report for what? Like a year? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's one of my ongoing projects is going through and clipping those out of the old Giggle Boys episodes <laughs> so I can have a super cut eventually. So, there it's, are so many good ones. Rome wasn't built in a day. Just chip away at it. Yeah, the amen. There was a lot of them. I mean, there was probably, what, two hours of just worm content. It, legitimately. There's yeah. there's so much. <laughs> and there, it, it's so fun to watch back because I, I mean, I still laughed as hard as I was in the studio. It, I understand how much people hate Burt Kreischer on his podcast for just laughing like a psychopath. <laughs> and then I watch those episodes and I'm just, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what if worms could play baseball? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, so how's the road been? I mean, you've been fucking doing it. <laughs> Is this my camera? Yeah. It's been so, it's been fun. <laughs> I, uh, yep. Been all around the country lately going to, Big, uh, big laugh factories and, and planting my seed and making everyone smile. And uh, it's been so fun. Yeah, I've been to, oh God, I don't even know, maybe 15 cities in the past uh, months or something. So have you had any of those moments cool. where you wake up in a hotel and you walk towards the bathroom and you're walking the wrong way? You're like, this isn't the hotel I thought I was in. <laughs> this is not my beautiful house. <laughs> yeah. Who is this woman? <laughs> this is not my beautiful wife. There's a body in my closet. That's, is this song uh, just about Alzheimer's or? Yes. Okay. It's about getting older and letting go of the things that you once loved. Oh, oh. So cool to think about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Let's be sad. <laughs> yeah. I was in a hotel um, last week in a mall. So I spent four days in a mall and oh. it was so fun. I went to Spencer's Gifts every day and I didn't buy anything. <laughs> God, I can't imagine how good Auntie Anne slaps for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I had Auntie Anne's four times. Yeah. I would have it once a day. That was my little gift. <laughs> yeah. The Auntie Anne's Orange Julius combo just slaps. Mm. I mean, it's, those are two parts of my food pyramid, actually. <laughs> they're, what they're, are the other parts, Marble? Yeah. <laughs> marble. That's the bottom part. That's yeah, the big part. It's the only thing that can hold it. Marble. Yeah, well, you have to have marble bays. <laughs> and the top is mashed potatoes like a shepherd's pie. <laughs> <laughs> Marbles, mashed potato, Auntie Anne, Orange Julius. <laughs> my food I, pyramid is covered in cheese, though. So. <laughs> oh, yum. I love... Orange Julius. Those are those delicious uh, orange smoothies, right? Yeah. I That was actually one of the first recipes I ever learned in home ec. <laughs> <laughs> in like sixth what? grade, we had this obese teacher that taught home ec, and she taught us to cook stuff. And, and we, like by the end of the six weeks, we had a binder of recipes. But the first one was an orange Julius. And it's just a fucking orange smoothie. <laughs> like there's, there's like three ingredients you stick in a blender and, and push a button. And you're in sixth grade. You're like, I'm a, I'm a chef. <laughs> I'm is there superstar a rat in my chef. Hat? How am I so good at this? <laughs> I can't tell you how many times in my daily life I've caught myself doing something like I've unblacked out and I go ratatouille. And I look <laughs> and there's a rat controlling my movement. <laughs> it's dozen, two dozen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is that is kind of what it feels like coming off of Xanax. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh my god, <gasps> <laughs> who was controlling the engines? Steal, <laughs> steal from your sister. <laughs> yeah. You want the silverware? Take your grandmother's silverware. Take the silverware. I don't know what it is, but like, I swear to God, everyone I knew that ever did meth stole and pawned silverware at some point. Yeah. It's, just, it's like it's just like it calls to them. <laughs> I don't know what it is about silverware. Well, you can melt it, right? It's one of the more valuable tools in a, any methods uh, repertoire. <laughs> I didn't even think about melting. I was, just, I was thinking, just I, I guess I could go to pawn shops and buy some amazing silverware at an incredible price <laughs> for the cheap. Yeah, yeah. sometimes I'll, yeah, I'll go to pawn shops. I'll get all kinds of damn stuff. They have good DVDs for like a dollar that tweakers pawn. Oh man, they're uh, the. 
I've started getting back into movie stuff. I'm so bad at movies because I haven't seen most of them. I remember you, the only thing you've seen is like Forrest Gump, right? I actually haven't seen Forrest <laughs> Gump, <laughs> but I've seen like all of the Airbud franchise and I've seen like all of the, dude, I just remembered about the movie Ed with Matt LeBlanc and the monkey that plays mm. baseball. Pull that up. I, <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Joey from Friends is a baseball player. This can't be happening. And he's going through like a terrible time in his life. And then the team gets a monkey that becomes his best friend. <laughs> and the monkey can also pitch, kind of. Okay, so it's an Airbud scenario. It is. Well, Airbud did the MVP Most Valuable Primate with the the <laughs> offshoots where the monkey plays sports. And Dunstan checks in. Yeah. This is this is ninety six. This yeah. is prime monkeys doing stuff they're not supposed to. <laughs> yeah. It's Dunstan checks in. Baby's day out. The gorilla was chasing the baby all the time from the mafia. Ed. That's it. But that's three too many. That's a lot. <laughs> it's an insane amount of, of yeah. monkeys movies. Oh, there's, uh, wasn't there a monkey space movie? Yeah. Was Rocket Man around that time? Doesn't Harlan bring a monkey to space with him? There's something like that. Space jumps go to New York. <laughs> <laughs> they come back from space and they go to the Big Apple. Well, do, I, uh, I've had so I, I one of the reasons I brought up movies I had like this hard opinion that every movie made before 1980 besides The Jerk was a bad movie. Sure, I've had similar thoughts. Yeah, because it, it just maybe they were good at the time, mm -hmm. but I feel like if something is good at the time, that just means it's bad. <laughs> like like Gone with the Wind was good at the time because there were no other movies. I don't go. I I go back a little further. I I don't go past 1969. There's a movie called A Panic in Needle Park with Al Pacino and this other girl, <laughs> or one girl. There's not a, a first girl to be the. We'll talk about it later. But I uh, <laughs> not worth it. Not worth it. Just, <laughs> you ever start a sentence and you're like, this is a battle. I don't. This is not worth fighting. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna go all that way. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. <laughs> but that's a great movie. It's like a Requiem for a Dream, but it's in, it was old. It's like 1969. So How did any, they pull off ass to ass back then? Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, it's it's really, really dark and it's really uh, graphic with the shooting up and there's like really graphic, gross sex and stuff. So I put it uh, AD, you know, before Panic in Needle Park, after Panic in Needle Park. Everything before that is absolute dog shit. Yeah, I... I didn't realize that Gone with the Wind played in theaters like daily, oh. country ride for like 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> like it has all these box office records. You're like, wow, people really love that movie. You're like, no, no, it was like a weekly activity. Like, hey, we're all going to go see Gone with the Wind out at the theater. <laughs> well, there was people didn't have like DVDs or VHSs. So, yeah, you would just it was like entertainment in a different way than it is now. Yeah. Yeah. It was like going to like a concert. You would just go watch Gone with the Wind. Yeah, I, I, I started to think about more of that stuff with like, as it applies to comedy, like how repeated a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know, I've been dumb and like, I don't want to put out content because then what are people going to see when they see me? Yeah. But then it's like, fucking, they have 800 billion other things yeah. that they're going to, they're not going to remember me. <laughs> no, they won't. They don't even really remember, like, because I have that problem with the Kill Tony stuff, people will know my, my best jokes. But if I typically, if it's not like, who was that man or uh, Blair Witch? They don't remember. They just don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. It's that the, the rewatchability of stuff is, is surprised me. I also like watching movies that I saw a decade ago and then watching them now. It's like, dude, I didn't remember this right at all. I didn't remember Dunstan had a gun when he checks in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't realize Dunstan was on the run for check fraud. He yeah. <laughs> was just checking in under fake names. <laughs> Dunstan wakes up, takes a big pull of a bottle, fucking pays a prostitute. <laughs> then he goes to check in. <laughs> I totally forgot about that whole scene. <laughs> yeah. Dunstan just uh, running through some uh, sex workers <laughs> very graphically. Yeah, I went back and watched like the first Fast and the Furious. Uh -huh. And I, I saw the last one in theaters. And I stood up and cheered at three different points <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Fast car! <laughs> Fast car! <laughs> when John Cena is with Vin Diesel's son or whatever in the plane, <laughs> and then there's bad guys coming for him, and John Cena's like, we got to get out of here. And takes the kid. It's supposed to be a commercial flight, and then somehow they have access through the bathroom to like a cargo hatch. <laughs> so they get down, and the thing that they checked, they had like a check bag it was a kayak 
and they go sure. to the kayak and they unzip it and it's actually a miniature plane and so then they both get into the plane <laughs> and then they're able to operate a lever and no. open the cargo <laughs> and then the plane drops out and they fly away but when the plane flew out I stood up and went plane <laughs> secondary plane it was so cool slightly smaller <laughs> but, but <laughs> <laughs> to see how far they've come <laughs> from where they were. Well, it's just finding new gadgets to go fast in. Yeah. So that's so fun. I did that with one of the, I've told the story many times on many podcasts, but the first funny thing I think I ever did, I was 15 years old. So it, I was a late bloomer as far as funny things. <laughs> and I went and saw Transformers Dark Side of the Moon. Yes. And the movie starts. And it was a packed house, like opening night. This is prime Transformers. So the city was electric. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I'm agreeing with yeah. you, but it sounds like you're being sarcastic. But the world was a different place was when different Transformers place. were coming out. It was. People were so excited about fucking Dodge turning into big robots. And <laughs> yes. so it starts and it the lights go down. And I stood up, packed house. We're in the middle. And I look around. Everybody, I got everybody's attention. And I go. Decepticons. <laughs> Everybody, they're at the edge of their seats. I go, Decepticons, unseen by the naked eye. And then I sat down and everybody cheered. <laughs> it was, I was like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my fucking life. 100%, 100% that whole crowd was just like, oh, the sweet autistic yeah. boy's excited. Unseen by the naked eye. <laughs> oh, he's good. His parents brought him to the movies. <laughs> oh man, I got a Autobots tattoo because of how much I loved those movies. Where is it? On Top of my back, butt cheek. Yeah, it, <sighs> so it's like where an Autobots logo would be if I was a real Transformer. <laughs> that was my thinking. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like how it's like a tramp stamp. Well, it should be a tramp stamp, right? I, I wasn't ready to commit to that. Sure. Just yet, I was just a 19 year old boy. And with, why not? With eighty dollars in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's so and uh, to be fair, uh, the artist told me he would not do it on my kneecap, which was my first request. <laughs> Why not? Uh, he said it would look bad. I have big bulbous Oshkid Schlatter's kneecaps. You get big caps. From, from having to hold up all of this for so long. Sure. <laughs> uh, they, they look like a hockey mask. They both are just they're, <laughs> they're very uh, D2 the Mighty Ducks looking. And, D2. Uh, yeah, so he didn't suggest doing that. <laughs> you look skinny or have you been losing weight? Uh, I have cancer. No, no. <laughs> Mike's dying. <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, I've been trying to exercise. I I don't know what it is. I think I've I've leaned so far into being such a fat fuck for so sure. long that like I was scared to do anything good for myself and lose that part of my identity. <laughs> it's like my last name's Eaton. Everybody knows me as the food guy. Like yeah, I can't the big, big boy. Yeah, I can't like get in shape or anything that'll ruin the mystique. And then yeah. the other day I went up a flight of stairs while I was on the phone and I was like, hold on for a second. And so I was like, yeah, I gotta, I probably gotta do something about this. <laughs> that's good. You've lost weight since the other day. Yeah. So <laughs> that's concerning. <laughs> I, well, I just basically decided I, I'm just going to give up on eating for a while sure. until I've earned the right to, to partake in food again. You're done with it. You maxed it out. You're in the eating hall of fame. Yeah. yeah. It's Joey Chestnut, <laughs> Kobayashi, Mike, Mike Eaton, Eaton. Yeah. Trey Pack. Yeah, Trey. Oh, man. <laughs> Trey Pack bodies me on food. Yeah, big boy. It's always uh, been interesting to me, though. I I power graze, so I'll eat. <laughs> <laughs> My method of eating is that I can consume quite a large amount of food, but it'll take a long time. Like, sure. I, I'll just keep eating for six hours. And, yeah. And just kind of stay like right around full for that whole time. You go on a food bender. But, yeah. but when I go out to eat with other larger mammals, they're always like, <laughs> why did you order so little? Are you going to eat more? And then I'll be like, well, in a minute. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's, I'm I, chipping away. I guess I'll get brick by brick. You brick know? by brick. I got 36 wings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you had any good culinary adventures on your travels? I don't eat like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, well, I pretty much just buy Soylent, whatever city I'm in. Soylent Green. I um, I I don't. I'm not a foodie. So it, w everywhere I go, I just go to Chick Fil A. That's so awesome. I go to Chick Fil A, and then have whatever. Have you had the new honey is. pimento sandwich? Uh uh. Oh, it's quite good. I have had the new uh, delicious crispy candied bacon. They have this new pepper bacon. Ooh, I, I think that was the sandwich of the month last month when uh, until the 25th when Peach Mochek <laughs> season ended. Yikes. 
<laughs> and I thought I was a Chick Fil A guy. <laughs> no, I, well, I live about a hundred yards from a Chick Fil A, oh, okay. <laughs> and there's a big fucking sign that always just says what the thing of the month is. <laughs> and I never tried the candied bacon one. It's it's really good. I got a spicy chicken sandwich several times, and I said, "Hey, sweetie." I said, "Hey, sweetie," and they said, "Hey, Casey," and I <laughs> and I said, "Speaking," and they said, "Well, you asked us," and then I said, "Okay." <laughs> I said, "Okay, this is get more complicated than it has to be." Put some pepper my bacon pleasure. on my spicy chicken sandwich, and they obliged. And it's really good. I like that a lot. <sighs> Yum. Yeah, I, I, uh, dude, their mac and cheese is also not bad for drive-through mac and cheese. It's not bad. It's up there. Yeah, I won't get you into food talk. You don't. You don't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I like food as much as the next guy, but when I go to a new city, yeah, I'll just go to like Subway or Chick Fil A. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I made the mistake. I was driving through Cincinnati from Dayton, beautiful <laughs> Dayton, Ohio, and uh-huh. uh, I stopped to get Skyline Chili. Because everybody's like, it's the signature dish of the town. <laughs> Are you familiar with? The yeah, delicacy? it's like uh, chili on spaghetti, right? Yeah, uh, it's and it's not just chili. It's chili with cinnamon and cocoa in. Oh, it. gross! What? And then they put it. And this is coming from me: an obscene <laughs> amount of shredded cheese on top. <laughs> I've seen pictures. Yeah. You eat the cheese or you just like kind of like take it all? So what I learned from the locals is that what you're supposed to do is ask for a side bowl, take some of the cheese off, and then eat it and re-cheese as you go (laughs) so that you don't get overly cheesed bites at the beginning. (laughs) Sure. I elected to go the kind of crispy taco Mexican restaurant version where you just see how much of that cheese you can get in each bite <laughs> so that you get that cool cold cheese compression in your mouth because it's cold it's not melted right? no no it is they t- they have a bucket i'm sure of an ob- obscene amount of cheese and then they just grab a huge handful and go Bruh. who created this and and why did it catch on that is the, the catching on part is the part that bothers yeah. me because there are a dozen locations of the skyline chili <laughs> fucking restaurant and it's yeah it is very cheap Mm -hmm. So I think that might be an appeal. Sure. Blue collar workers. But Cincinnati, like it's beautiful outside. Like it's a pretty city. Like the, the Japanese place by the go bananas there is fucking fire. I can't imagine that you don't have better options than dirt chili over noodles. Chocolate chili. Yeah. It's just. That's fucked up. It is. It's rude to do that to people. Chocolate chili. I hate even thinking about that. Cincinnati, you deserve better. You deserve better in in your baseball team's dog shit. Oh man. (laughs) Uh, dude, Galen has been getting hardcore into baseball again, and it has been so because I, man, I like it, and I've gone to a few. We went uh, uh-huh. not too long ago. John Heater came and did a meet and greet at from Napoleon Dynamite. Correct. What the fuck? <laughs> he, he came and did a meet and greet at the Round Rock Express game. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> dude, we got a group of like six or seven of us. And it was John out. Heater night. Yeah. Why was that? <laughs> what? Dude, dude, That's it, insane. It, it was just John Heater night. <laughs> For some reason, he like came and did. I think so. Before the game, he was out like in like one of the little bar things, and you could all just get in a line and meet him. And then they gave you little like cocktail cups full of tater tots. So you, you can just eat tots and then meet Napoleon. You take your picture with him, and then for the entire seventh inning, he called the game. From the wow, booth. that's fun. So he was bringing players like, oh, this guy's a freaking idiot. <laughs> like <laughs> just fun. doing Napoleon, bringing up players. <laughs> and you know, you're several beers deep in the seventh inning, just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> that's so, I can't think of another person <sighs> who had an arc like that. He was so famous for that one thing. And then I guess he was in bench warmers. But other than that, he was never in anything ever again. Yeah. But I guess he got typecast, I guess. Was he, no, he was in Blades of Glory. Okay, you're right. right. Opposite Will Ferrell. But I think that was like the that was the end of John Heater. That was the end. I don't know if he did like a Rick Moranis thing, though, where he was like, I, I made enough movie off of these blockbusters and I can Baby. just go. Didn't Rick Moranis just get punched in the face or something? <laughs> yeah, somebody jacked his shit up on the streets in New York. <laughs> yeah. Somebody saw Rick Moranis and was like, fuck no. Can you imagine? <laughs> this is for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for shrinking your kids, you piece of shit. That's a, I imagine him in county jail and all the cholos are like, let me see your papers. And he's like, no. And they're like, let me see your papers. And he shows his papers and it's, he shrunk his kids. That's yeah. why he's in jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they just start wailing on him. <laughs> Fucking chomo. <laughs> I didn't touch him. I shrunk him. <laughs> <laughs> this one says you blew them up. <laughs> I shrunk them. It's an experiment gone wrong. <laughs> 
my dad looks uh, eerily similar to both Rick Moranis and Jeff Goldblum. And it, that was such a, a weird facet of my childhood. <laughs> See, those would be like, Dad, do you do this too? Like they do this? No, <laughs> I'm a lawyer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your papa's a lawyer. He was, yeah. I think he's getting back into it. He got he, disbarred. He's been, yeah, for a little bit. He's been he, really, <laughs> yeah, sort of. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the, the whole extent of it because we didn't have we didn't like talk about it sure. much. But there there was like an arc in his life where he went from being like a, a high powered like tax attorney to doing like celebrity law. So he like sued the Catholic diocese of the state of Texas on behalf of a college. Oh, wow. Uh, then he represented Warren Jeffs suing the state of Texas. Who Warren is? Uh, Branch Davidian guy. Bullet up. Um, <laughs> and then uh, he went to go be a barrister in England and had some stuff fall apart. Wow. And then he came back and taught at community college in Houston until he went to Bangladesh to be the Dean of Economics for Asian Women's University. And what? Shitting okay. on Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> and then the pandemic hit and he was like, I can't do that. So then he came back and now uh, he runs the, he works for a, like a homeless nonprofit in Gainesville, Florida. Okay. That's the home of the Florida Gators. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yes, and, it is. And uh, he's an SMU guy. He went to SMU uh, around like, he was like, friends with guys that had played with Don Meredith. Like his attorney mentor was Don Meredith's center in okay. college. So he's like a huge SMU ponies guy. So he fucking hates Florida from the old Southwest <laughs> conference. And just wearing his pony shit and trying to start shit with Floridians. It's like, dad, yeah. you're going to get shot. There's yeah. <laughs> a bunch of 22 year old kids yeah. trying to get in fist fights with him. So he's going to get Rick Moranis. So <laughs> that, that probably probably thought that was my dad. And they're like, we're going to beat the shit out of Mike Leighton <laughs> senior. He's like, I'm Rick Moranis. <laughs> I'm Rick. I'm pickle Rick. He says he's pickle Rick. And then everyone laughs and lets him go. <laughs> oh, Smart. Man, do you get any of the that craze with your fans that are the insane people like the Szechuan sauce people from McDonald's during the <laughs> Rick and Morty craze? <laughs> like I, what? They like crowd around me and try to steal my bones. They were just screaming your your punchlines at you. Oh, for you? sure. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happens every day. Yeah, everywhere I go, uh yeah. I don't know. I try to enjoy it because I don't think I'm going to have a very long shelf life. I think my my star is fading. I think I'm getting sicker for some reason. And <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's a causation or correlation. Double cancer. <laughs> <laughs> eyeball cancer. I got eyeball cancer. So I don't know, man. So I try to enjoy it. But yeah, everywhere I go, yeah, people will yell. Yeah. Uh, Grab man or grimace. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and one of my favorite Patton Oswalt stories is him working a casino where he gets on stage mm -hmm. and, and he did the meet and greet before the show and was like, no, we usually do those after. And like, you're going to want to do it before. He's like, why? <laughs> and then he goes out to just a thousand blackout drunk people. Oh, my God. And the entire he's he only had to do 30 minutes. And for 30 minutes, they just named things he'd been in. And he'd go, yeah. <laughs> they go, king of queens. And then everybody would go, and they'd go, yeah. <laughs> and it was the biggest check he ever made. <laughs> like, man, that's, man, what a dream. thousand dollars <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. I, man, I don't, I, I have, uh, I don't know how much Baji you talking about. I, I have championed that. I, I don't think that you'll have a short shelf life because you've, you have, always um, exceeded expectations, especially in long form. What, sure, yeah. That's the thing I, I had heard so many people say like, sure, he's funny for five minutes. Could, could you imagine watching an hour? It's like, well, I, I watched him film it and I watched 250 people lose their fucking minds for yeah. an hour. So like, <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine it. It's, uh, he does tempo change when he's doing a longer set. The fuck are you talking about? Maybe you're right. Yeah, I mean, because yeah, there's always a side of you that people haven't, Seen it's it's a very specific set of circumstances because I am so fast paced. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think uh, people have been pretty happy on the on the road. So maybe I won't die of eyeball cancer. Maybe I'll I'll make it a couple yeah, more. Yeah, or maybe they'll do like a flubber reboot or something. <laughs> They're gonna bring me back as flubber. Yeah. I mean, it's... They're gonna put my ashes <laughs> into one of those little squishy things uh, that you get uh, a little squishy thing. Yeah. You so. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. A little piece of fucking Play-Doh, and you can uh, put it on a newspaper silly putty. They can yeah. make me out of silly putty for boys. Oh, man. Uh, one of the other things I have <laughs> in my notes to bring <laughs> yeah. Let me just no sell. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, 20 minutes is probably good. <laughs> I, think, I think we got enough pod. Uh, the, uh, I went to the Cryptid Museum. Yes, yeah. okay, I saw that. So it was the <laughs> Museum of Cryptozoology. <laughs> And uh, I've always been fascinated by Bigfoot stuff. 
Yeah. Because it's so bullshit. <laughs> like, like sure. it just, It's <clears throat> such nonsense. And I'm like, well, this, it's hilarious that there is a large enough group of people that are willing to just like Christianity level delusion themselves into being <laughs> like, there are Bigfoot out there. And, and I, I paid the 15 bucks to go through the museum. But one of the things I didn't realize, Teddy Roosevelt, is one of the first people to have like a sighting of a Sasquatch. He saw a Sasquatch. He talked about it in like at length. And it's like, <laughs> but that's Teddy Rose. He can't lie. Uh, what did he say that he saw? An ape man? Yeah, he, he was on like an expedition and saw like a crazy giant ape man and like described, uh, I want to say he was somewhere in the Southwest, but they have Probably. like all of the sightings and, and they have like, different names for what region they're in. So it's not always a Sasquatch or a big foot. Yeah, there's a... skunk apes. There's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and... I know a lot about it. Yeah, yeah, there's a damn <laughs> skunk ape. And uh, yeah, it seems like different. With the, with the weird thing is, is that they look different. It's like different species. Almost. Yeah. So that it gives it, I think, lends it some degree of credibility, the... uh, depending on where you fall on the spectrum. Yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> not the autism spectrum, the big foot spectrum. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Mutually sure. exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> the well, I just I guess like also how much it's like pervaded into cult. there was so much about Bigfoot that's in popular culture yeah not just like Harry and the Hendersons but like throughout all of cartoons and stuff it's in so many commercials now this is fucking disinformation man <laughs> it's the government this is what they do with UFOs they go oh they're really scary you need to be scared of these things when they're probably our damn friends and then Bigfoot they're trying to make him seem like this lovable oaf and I guarantee you'd rip your face off like Charlie Nash <laughs> <laughs> I do hope that there eventually is like a Bigfoot killing. That would, like if, if we could get I someone got excited. Just get, yeah. <laughs> I got excited about the Charlotte Nash reference. Ooh, I'm riffing so fucking hard. I, uh, <laughs> um, what was yours? What did you sorry? <laughs> what was the last thing? I, I lost sight of myself. Not only did I lose sight of the riff, I lost sight of myself, which is scary. <laughs> no, I just the the amount of so I, I went in with the sole purpose of Bigfoot stuff. Absolutely. There's a giant Bigfoot statue in front of it. And I was like, maybe there'll be some other cool cryptids. There are so many. Yeah. Uh it, it was in Maine, and Maine itself has like a hundred. <laughs> it, it seems like just about everywhere that has a large body of water that's part of the culture of the area has a Loch Ness monster named mm. after yeah. that lake. <laughs> Yeah, champ. There's yeah. a bunch of them, dude. That's uh, so I I I'm going the same route I've gone with aliens on this is where it started off where like probably not to like I, I think probably we got some good evidence. Well, I think, and I'm glad you brought this up, Mike, and I'm happy to be here. I uh, <laughs> I think Bigfoot is. Well, I just read this great book <laughs> called uh, Dark Matter Monsters, and it's basically the theory is that Bigfoot. Uh, I think 99 percent of our known universe is dark matter. So this is light matter, things, these molecules. And dark matter are things that you can't see. And it's real, I guess, theoretically or whatever. That, th whatever. So the idea- <laughs> It's real, the, trust the, us. The idea is that, and the book was written by a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> a doctor of what? I don't know. Chiropractic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he a went fucking to the Palmer dentist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's in this like laminated, almost like a children's book. Anyways, <laughs> but, <so> sick. <laughs> and it's definitely 100% self-published. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Penguin Press isn't touching this shit. But it's uh, basically the theory is that Bigfoot is an, made out of organ energy. So he can dissipate and uh, rematerialize uh, at will. So he's basically like, not necessarily a ghost, but he has like camouflage capabilities. He's yeah, like a chameleon. Yeah, predator stuff. Yeah, predator stuff. And people, a lot of people will see like predator type things around UFO sightings. They'll see like reflection, like people like camouflage type things, which yeah. is weird. The so. more I've gotten into UAP stuff and uh, gotten to know Chris Ramsey mm -hmm. and some of the, the alien stuff that he's talked about for lack of better terms, just the, the amount of like the point of contact stuff in Cartagena, Virginia, Brazil, Mm -hmm. There was a bunch of little kids that saw like a craft like crash. Yeah. And they went over and they were like telepathically communicating with this thing. And it was like saying like help. And then military <laughs> people show up. They take the the body of this thing and the spacecraft. They load it up. That gets taken to a U.S. military base uh -huh. in Brazil. 
the guy that picked up the alien and did it dies 24 hours later. Yeah, they said he got real sick. Like crazy yeah. sick and just dies immediately. And then all <laughs> of the, blood eye. the autopsy results and stuff like disappeared. And yeah. like all of the, the stuff around it. <laughs> but then the kids are like, no, we fucking saw it. And then and those like, kids got damn Epstein. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all hung themselves. Do you think there were children. any kids that enjoyed Epstein's Island? <laughs> <laughs> probably. I mean, they probably came from like pretty shady backgrounds. Yeah. So they're probably like, oh my God, the ocean is beautiful. <laughs> this beautiful white and blue room. I love it. He plays us <laughs> piano. There's like an hour of the day that sucks, but the rest is like pretty nice. <laughs> he loosens up the chain on Fridays. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, uh, people people call it the phenomenon. So Bigfoot's part of the phenomenon. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Bigfoot, UFOs, poltergeists. It's all like in the same zeitgeist. That the, these things are all somehow interrelated because mm -hmm. in areas with high UFO sightings, there's high uh, Bigfoot encounters, and there's also high uh, uh, instances of poltergeist activity among people who see UFOs. So it's like it's all like the same thing, but what is it? You know? Yeah, I don't know. I, it's, man, there's, uh, from my time doing DMT so much, uh -huh. like I <laughs> definitely interacted in some other realm that is not here with things that were not here. Yeah. Uh, but like, I, man, I, I feel schizophrenic when I explain what I think the universe is. <laughs> Cause it's like, I have so much solid proof in my brain of the things I saw on drugs. Yeah. It's like, yeah, duh, this is how it works. <laughs> and then you say it out loud and you're like, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm the same. Cause I time traveled once on ketamine and mm -hmm. I, and I touched myself on the shoulder while I was playing rec baseball. And then when I snapped out of the trip after several hours, because I did ketamine and speed, which is a terrible combination. Because <laughs> it, combo. it makes it makes the ketamine last as long as the speed lasts. Oh so, shit, Gardugas. Yeah, so I was just in an absolute. <laughs> do you want to freak realm. out faster yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and longer? Yeah. and it's permanent. Yeah. <laughs> well, the beautiful part of the speed is now you can concentrate on the K hole. Yeah, you can concentrate <laughs> on being scared shitless. <laughs> so, so, so I remember touching myself, and then when I came out of, I touched myself on the shoulder while I was playing wreck baseball and the moment i touched myself i had the memory of that happening to me as a child of playing baseball and feeling someone tap me on the shoulder and turning around and there was no one there and i was like holy sh i literally like fucking donnie darko that's so and crazy it, it was it was by far the most profound experience of my entire life yeah it, and yeah so to me i know that there are gateways <laughs> Yeah. To go <laughs> fuck with yourself as a baseball player when you were eight years old. <laughs> there, there is like those moments. I've met uh, a small group of people that don't do any kind of psychedelic drugs or any mind altering stuff that just meditate like crazy uh -huh. that have had similar experiences where they've had out of body stuff and astral projection. Oh, astral stuff. project. That's what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it just leads me to believe that there's some kind of. Um, I think Chris explained it to me. It's like, we're in this universe and then there's the quantum universe and then there's like the source energy. Yeah. And when you do drugs, you can be up here and then touch pieces of this. Yeah. DMT will take you up there. But meditation, you can slowly rise yourself up those levels. Oh, that's so interesting. And access into it. But also, then you have to be cool with being just bored as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 23 hours a day when you're not astral projecting. Yeah. The last time I talked to Chris, he was like, dude, this is like a really fun brunch and I love spending time with you guys. I cannot wait to get home and meditate for four hours. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> that's, yeah, I don't know. I'm scared of what I would find in my own damaged Joker psyche. <laughs> I'm basically like Arthur Fleck. Yeah. I know the Joker's name. Yeah, that's <laughs> a bonkers move. Is it's, that his name across the whole universe, or is that just the Joker that's Joaquin Phoenix? What is it, Mr. Peebus? It used to be something different, Mr. Peebus. I feel like he, the... Was it Mark Hamill that voiced him in the animated series? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that Joker had a different yeah. name, name. but It's like Jonathan Oregano. <laughs> if it's Jonathan Reagan, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. Ch Chuck Osborne no. <laughs> it was a uh, Jack Oswald White. I wrote Jack okay. Oswald White. So it's different. The There's DC different. Card. Yeah, I wrote something. Jack in, White is the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote something in my notes a couple months ago, and I was 
before a stand up set the other day, I was scrolling and trying to find like jokes to use, and all it said was Garrett penmanship. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, all right, we got a winner. We the first got a winner. guy to write well. Yeah. <laughs> Garrett penmanship. Garrett penmanship. Uh, <laughs> dude, I wrote a, a letter the other day and I wrote in cursive. Ooh. And it's that's such a crazy thing. Yeah. There, I have this dumb hardwired ability to write in loopy, swirly letters <laughs> that holds almost no value and is practically illegible to anyone under 25. How did you, what, was it a love letter? Yes. Yeah. So, so it had to be incursive. Sure. Naturally. I've written a couple love letters in my day. I love romance. So when I meet a girl and we start dating, Right in the beginning, I'll write her letters all the time. Yeah. I've always done that. That's cool. I like it. That's I love, a fun move. I love love. Do you do like James Joyce style letters? I'll do like- Because those are my favorite. Like really, I don't really necessarily know what that means. Oh, he do... writes about how much he loves their farts. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he uses beautiful prosaic text to talk about big blustery fellows. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. He's a real horde ball for love. <laughs> Fart love. I'll write like just really sappy, sappy stuff. And I do it way too early too. Sick. We'll go on like one date and I'll go like, send me your address. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yes. I've done it with like each of my last four. Four girlfriends. That's so much fun. I just like it. And I fall for, I fall really easily for women. Yeah. Dude, I think there's uh, also like an aspect. I watched that one of the, the genre of movie I have seen a lot of is like rom-coms. Mm -hmm. And I just, I love love too. I think it's so sweet. I love it. It's, I just finished watching through Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Uh -huh. And the last episode with Amy and Jake and they're figuring out their family and they're so in love and they're going to figure out how they could balance work and life. Dude, I was weeping. <laughs> what? Just, just alone in my room watching a fucking shitty sitcom <laughs> and just weeping. It's, like, it's so beautiful. They're going to make it work. I love you. <laughs> they're going to make it work. <laughs> That's so lame. <laughs> yeah, dude, it really is. But I'm the same way, but I don't really watch. I don't really watch rom-coms. I mostly just watch like a Serbian film. I mostly just watch like really <laughs> that's dark a love story. horror movies. It is in some ways. Well, it's, it's a socio-political love story. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's an analogy for sort of how the government just rakes you over the coals. Did you see the sequel? No. Uh, two Serbian, two film. <laughs> <laughs> two Serbian, two furious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Serbian film three, Tokyo Drift took a wild turn. <laughs> Tokyo is just racing cars now. Yeah. This beloved character, <laughs> the porn star from a Serbian film. <laughs> Listen, the only way we can absolve your crimes of fucking that baby yeah. is if you could get these stolen DVDs <laughs> to Washington, D.C. in nine hours. <laughs> Wait, so is that really the premise? I got to be honest with you. I don't think I've seen any Fast and Furious. I might have seen Tokyo Drift. Was there something with, it's okay, I'm still your friend. <laughs> yeah. It's still me. <laughs> it's still me and, and nobody's going to hurt you as long as I'm around. <laughs> and is there really something with DVDs? There is in the first one. There's okay. They're uh, like protecting a trailer of them. Of DVD, yeah, okay. Because <laughs> what year did that come out? Was that ninety nine? I think it's pre two thousand one. I think this was a pre nine eleven film, and yeah. everything went back then. Two thousand one. Oh fuck! Oh my god! Same year. So I think it came out, but but was it before? Was it a summer blockbuster June before nine eleven? Yeah. June, yeah. Twenty second. God. Yeah. So we that was good. We had that it. was the summer before fifth grade for me, and <laughs> and we learned about family, and then we had to watch the towers fall. <laughs> 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 traumatizing that is it's more traumatizing in the context of yeah you know what family means now yeah and, and you know there's so many people who aren't going to be able to go home to their families dude tonight. that's so troubling dude in the i think it's fast <laughs> seven or maybe fast five but it's where they do the paul walker tribute sure and they play i think it's like a lincoln park or, I, I don't remember what song it is, but it's a very poppy fun song that we all know and they're dom uh vin diesel and paul walker's character are driving next to each other i saw that and yeah. then he, he goes on drives away i cried <laughs> i cried so fucking hard dude <laughs> it's like i love you paul 
goodbye. And then you hear his car crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, why did they include that? Yeah. <laughs> you had such a nice moment. Why would yeah. you do this to us? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> why does it say he crashed into Ryan Dunn? I was, this about, sucks. I was about to say the same exact thing. <laughs> That's so funny. You ever look up at the moon and, and wonder if someone's riffing at that same moon? <laughs> yeah. That's what just happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Why did it say, oh shit, it's Ryan Dunn. <laughs> It's like 80 yard in the back. What the fuck? <laughs> Is he okay with this? Is his family okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Bam just comes out on one of his little yeah. scooters and joins him into the fast period. Oh, they both died, Ryan Dunn and Paul. <laughs> Shit. What the fuck? Vito, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> you hear him slapping his belly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he go to prison? He's dead. Yeah, uh, Don Vito's uh, got in trouble for kid fuckery. Yeah, kid fuckery. Uh, but Bam's like sober and on the straight and narrow now. He's like he he was he kept flip flopping and yeah. then he would fuck up and then he had like a pretty public breakdown. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think for like several months now he's been good. Yeah, I've seen some clips. He looks great. He was down at <laughs> uh, the Black Rifle Compound with Bucky Lasik. Really, the two of them were just watching comedy one night there. Wow. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> Bam Margera has seen my comedy. That <laughs> that's just, <laughs> dude, do you, does it trip you out to think the number of people that have seen you that are like? people that have been parts of your lore yeah it is weird well i had the grave digger person message me no which is kind of cool and no. I'm, I'm really good friends with paul walter hauser what up what paul, who is a uh, richard jewel yeah no shit <laughs> paul i thought he was the most brilliantly talented <laughs> actor with down syndrome he doesn't have first... down syndrome he doesn't he's the my first friend role. what uh what role was he in this he's my friend that was like his first breakout one i don't know he was in it's always sunny yeah <laughs> he's been a was he in Logan Lucky? Yeah. I don't know. Was he? I love uh, dead air. Hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was in Inside Out too, and that's all we really need to talk Cruellis. about. Yeah, he's been in a million good movies, and he's a good friend of mine, and we text around the holidays. Every holiday, I say, what up, Bob? That's really fucking cool. Uh, um, I had this, I have this eye thing going on. Uh -huh. Yes. I have iritis. And it's where the iris, when it's exposed to any sort of light, has a muscle spasm, and it's excruciatingly painful. So you have to keep it uh, dilated. You can go blind from it, but I'll be fine. I'm over the hump. But I, <laughs> I, 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 get it, I get it once a year. But I posted on my Instagram story, Papa got poo eye. Papa got poo eye. And uh, I get a message from uh, this actor, Cody. I'd have to look at his name. But he's an actor from like movies that Agent I know. Cody Banks? Agent Cody Banks. <laughs> Holy shit. <Yeah. laughs> but he told me, he said, have you ever been tested for like spondifilication gardalitis? And I go, what? And I look it up and it's literally the exact symptoms. He like solved my poo dye. But he's this actor. So that's the whole story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be easier if I could remember his name, but I don't even feel like looking it up. But yeah, it's kind of cool getting to meet people that you admire. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I, I, all those are very cool. The Gravedigger one is the coolest one Grave for digger. sure. That's yeah. so sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's super sick. Yeah. And it's badass, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so you've had, like, so you got to do Madison Square Garden. Was that just retarded? Awesome? I mean, of course it was cool, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was great. It went really good. I was really, really brave. And <laughs> there was an online poll, and they said I was the bravest one of the whole night. That's pretty incredible. Um, that was Us Weekly. And I did vote against that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said Aaron Belisle was bravest. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Actually, I voted for Aaron Belisle's speaker as bravest of the night. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, man, it was really cool. It was a dream come true. I felt like I was, uh, you know, I don't really like talking about that stuff, but it went, it went wonderful. Cool. Yeah. Well, then we'll talk about something completely <laughs> different. <laughs> well, uh, just cause, uh, whatever, man, but it went good. Yeah. No, I, I, it is, uh, one of those things where when you're in the midst of it, you're like, well, I, yeah, I did it, but, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. Yay, cool. <laughs> there, well, there's really nothing yeah, else I can great. say except that it went real good and I was brave as fuck. Yeah. Uh, New York's a fucking wild city. I had never been. Really? I had never been. And here I am in the Big Apple about to riff my little tits off. And 
I saw the Elmo. There was an Elmo in Times Square. I thought you said the Alamo. I was like, buddy, that's, <laughs> that's San Antonio. And I remembered the Alamo. <laughs> Casey's that Elmo sick. in Times Square? <laughs> the Casey's sick. I don't think we fixed your eye, brother. <laughs> <laughs> the eye killed me months ago. This is all part of the ketamine trip. I swear to God, if I wake up and this has all been part of that ketamine trip, I'm going to be fucking furious. Because that was years ago. I would give all the money in the world to have something tap your shoulder right now. <laughs> God. That would be and that would be scary because that tells me that down the line, I'm going to do ketamine again. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm going to have to trip really hard like that again. It's that scene from Looper where the guy starts losing his fingers. Yeah. Like, what? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, my nose is gone. <laughs> my penis is twice its size. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Somehow they, they did a surgery. Yeah, it's <laughs> gone. It's sick. <laughs> and it's back twice as big. Oh, hell yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. They changed my voice. Yeah. Wow. This is aces. <laughs> my my thing's huge. <laughs> yeah. I. I uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a big thing. <laughs> New York is uh, one of those cities that. Uh, there's so much representation of it in media uh -huh. that every time that I visited as an adult, I've been like, oh, this is just like a, a grime ball. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just there's Times Square is is it's capitalism manifest. Yeah, I was there. The last time I was there was like 5 a.m. And it was as bright as noon. Yeah, so that's when I the only time I went there, I stayed out real late one night just walking around. I went there at like five or six in the morning. And yeah, it's like a second sun. Yeah, it's it, it's truly insane that like you're being lit up by a Coca Cola advertisement. Yeah, <laughs> like, like that has got to be the worst place to be a schizophrenic homeless. Where she's like, the sun is Coca Cola. <laughs> like, no, it's all around us. Yeah. Buffalo Wild Wings is the church, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is a dangerous rabbit hole to go down. Oh, you're telling me, <laughs> <laughs> food church has ruined me. <laughs> Worshiping at the altar of boneless wings. Yeah. My communion is all you can eat, and it's a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of a wafer, it's a boneless wig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Man, that would be... I just, I just kind of want to do that now. <laughs> just have a meeting where we do fat communion. <laughs> and you have a little cup of ranch and a little boneless wing, the body of blood. Yeah. <laughs> and you eat it the fat guy way where you split the wing in half and suck all the meat oh. off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have gotten some very uh, <laughs> upsetting looks from people when I lollipop like, yeah. uh, a flat. And you just go, <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? It's especially dangerous when you go to the Iron Bear for 50 Cent Wing Night. And it's just all gay men watching straight men eat cheap wings. <laughs> and they're like, this is the best thing that's ever. They're geniuses for setting that up. Yeah. I mean, how do we get a bunch of breeders in here to suck things? Uh, well, I, I don't know that they'll do a popsicle eating contest. Maybe 50 cent wing night. <laughs> do you consider yourself to be a breeder? I've heard through the grapevine that you do. Uh, I'm straight. Uh, yeah. I, I haven't successfully bred yet. Sure. So I think I'm a potential breeder. Well, you're a breeder in the rough. I've started breeding and then <laughs> abruptly stopped the breeding on several occasions. Are you talking about not busting? No. I was talking about bobos. <laughs> bobos. Yeah. Talking about sending a baby to heaven. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> which is really the greatest gift you could get. Yeah. <laughs> you want them to go through that? I wish I had been aborted. It would be so much easier to have just gone back into the ether. Oh, my God. I'm in heaven again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What a blessing. Um, I'm a breeder. I do big busts daily. Um, <laughs> you know me. I don't really even understand what that even really means. What does that mean? You have baby? Yeah, I, uh, it's it's meant to be. All of the marginalized groups have tried to take power back from the slurs that, that they've been called <laughs> by slurring the the oppressive group. Yeah, who watches the Watchmen? Yeah, yeah and so the, <laughs> I think at some point some of the bitter gay community took the term breeder and were like fucking breeders about straight people. Okay. Uh, and then I think it's one of those deals where like straight people, because they're not marginalized, were just like fucking sick. Breeders. Uh, breeders. <laughs> yeah. And it just <laughs> lost all. It's like calling a white person a cracker. It's like, that's very funny. <laughs> You're taking the power back. Yeah. Well, I, I've always enjoyed white racism. I think it's sure. like, I, I had a, a guy called me bird shit. That's very funny. <laughs> Snow roach is my personal favorite. What was the context of the bird shit? Like what up bird shit? 
Uh, a person flaming me on a video game. Okay. I was playing League of Legends. <laughs> and uh, you called you little baby bird shit. Yeah. You just started honky ass cracker bird shit motherfucker snow rich piece of shit yeah it's <laughs> it's really funny it's, it's that is funny especially given the context that like you can't even see me <laughs> but, yeah <laughs> it's all over text <laughs> <laughs> well it is funny because uh uh we've never been oppressed so it's nothing but a gas to us it's yeah. nothing but a nice goof <laughs> yeah. it's like it doesn't really hurt my feelings to call me now snow if an roach. englishman started calling me irish slurs oh I beat i'll the bomb head. their car I'd right now the piss i don't out give of a shit yeah i call my buddies we'd put a couple fucking quid in the boot of the lorry and <laughs> fucking taxation their ass without representation <laughs> 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 that, was, that was just English slang Mad Libs so well. <laughs> Dude, uh, oh, I can't wait to Boston Tea Party some of these bitches. <laughs> Dude, I um, I was just in Boston not that long ago, and I don't understand how anybody really cared about all the tea business. I don't get how that was such a big It own. was bigger back then. I get, tea sucks, though. Back uh, when men were men. I, tea does suck. I don't like tea. It's dirty water. It's for little kids. You want to put long clippings in water and tell me that it imparts flavor? Mm-mm. Gross. I'm calling the police instantly. <clears throat> the police are on their way, and I'm also one of them. I'm undercover. <laughs> all of the, the people I know that are giant tea freaks are all uh, people from the South that put a metric fuck ton of sugar in it. Yeah. So they're like, well, I love sweet tea. Like, I think you love sugar water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that you are the bad guy from Men in Black. <laughs> sugar. <laughs> Million. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like how he move his face because he's really a big worm. I've never related more to that character than with a hangover. Yeah. <laughs> like when you wake up, you, you're like, I need water. Water? Salt? Sugar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me on Monday mornings. Um, <laughs> man, I, uh, I'm i so glad we got to catch up. I, I don't want to just keep bombing you with questions about career stuff. Are you have anything you're, you've got that you're excited for coming up or anything you're working on you're pumped about? <laughs> I um well thanks for asking Mike I'm happy to be here man I uh well I guess as now's as good a time as any I um I am uh having fun I'm and I'm doing good <laughs> <laughs> be doing experimenting eye style face off surgery I'll be switching eyes with Billie Eilish <laughs> yes so she can walk a mile in my shoes. And then I could walk a mile with large breasts. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> if she's not going to fuck her hot brother, then I will. <laughs> I will. And I'm doing it for America and I'm live streaming it yeah. <laughs> uh, on Twitch. Just the most devious Freaky Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it's just live streaming me having sex with my brother, but it's uh, <laughs> it's the different soul. So it's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, Casey, CaseyRocketComedy.com. I'm on tour until the end of the year. All kinds of fun cities. I'm in uh, Tempe, Arizona next weekend. Um, I have a bunch of cool t-shirts on my website. But yeah, I, um, nothing too big. Me and uh, me and some people have been writing some sketches. So it's, it's the classic comedian thing. Uh, and none of the sketches are made, so not even worth saying. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never see them, you fools. <laughs> they you got excited? <laughs> they'll never come to fruition. They're children of my mind and my mind alone. <laughs> I've been in eight different sketch groups and we've never filmed one. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> the classic comedian. <laughs> Dude, it is that. That's. <laughs> it's always like that. I mean, it's a lot of talk. I'm all talk, no action, man. That's showbiz, baby. <laughs> but I'm on the road. I'm the co-host of the William Montgomery Show. You can listen every Wednesday at 8.30, uh, wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube. Fuck so. yeah. Did you have like a, a surgeon's general warning you have to read now? <laughs> <laughs> the last one became so serious. <laughs> I will be doing a face-off March 25th um, <laughs> with the first person who crosses my path, consensually or not. And uh, face-off under this new legislation that I have pushed so feverishly for um will be legal just for me and i'm allowed to do it up to five times per year um to anyone i wish and i think i will start um with rachel dolezal so it's Man, that's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> the tone matching on that is gonna be a real pain <laughs> she's got a real gradient thing going on from just cheek to cheek <laughs> you know she has an only fans didn't know she doesn't i swear on my life oh my god rachel dolezal does she do full nude she does 
She no, shows she hole. doesn't. Rachel Dolezal shows holes all. And she <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> we don't riff like that. <laughs> and you barely got it in right before the buzzer. Right at the buzzer. Right at the buzzer. You got in holes all. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Justin, please don't pull that up. Uh, Casey, thank you so much for coming by. This has been highly social. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye.